I don't get it. What? One minute she's over the moon that I'm seeing Sarah, and the next she's being like that. I don't know where I stand. Well, she probably doesn't either. Remember, she might be a mum, but she's still a 15-year-old. Teenagers can be moody, so and so's. Just make allowances for the hormones. I had two with you lot. You'll understand what I mean when Sarah turns 13. I have to be honest with you, Debbie. I'm not sure I can deal with all this secrecy anymore. And what's that supposed to mean? I just think that there's going to be too much pressure. Well, if it's too much, like, hard work for you... No, hang on a minute. What I was going to say was that I think we should go and tell Andy. No way! Why not? Because he'll go mad! It will let him. No, Rob, he's going to be upset. Have you still got feelings for him? No. Well, then. <sighs> right. Let's go. Fun or uh, just plain odd? Hey, <laughs> having a rich fantasy life's good for you. Relieves stress and tension, huh? Anyway, they're not hurting anybody. True. I bet you're a secret Star Wars geek. I might have seen Empire 35 times. Yeah. Tragic. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that French lot turning up. I mean, what are they going to think of having breakfast with them? I think they're going to be more worried about us finding rooms for them than having breakfast with a bunch of loonies. You took your time. I'm going to have to go into Orton, Dad. It's making this worse. I don't think there was a mechanic in the family. What are you doing here? Get out! Look, we don't want any trouble, Andy. Debbie, what are you playing at bringing him here? We need to talk. What do you mean, we? What the hell's going on? Rob wanted to come up here to be straight with you. Is this for real? Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bonjour. <laughs> Bienvenue à Emmerdale. Right, which one of you two is Delphine? Who est Delphine? Anyone? Delphine? Elle n'est pas ici. Elle est restée en France. You what? But what's she doing in France? She's meant to be here. Oh, well, don't panic. Um, now, who speaks Anglais? Oh, now, come on, you're having a laugh. <laughs> Oi, unless either of you knows the French word for double booked, I suggest you both wind your necks in. What do you think I'll ask about? Who cares? Mm. What's up with you? Well, I've been going through the CCTV tape. And? And it hasn't been changed for weeks. Oh, well, well done, that's your job. Since when? Well, since she started. Well, wouldn't it have been a good idea to tell me? Oh, this isn't helping. No CCTV, no thief. I'll never be able to trust anyone again. Well, if it was a thief, I still reckon you messed up when you sold that armoire. <laughs> to the tune of 500 pounds, I don't think so. Then I could suggest that you were so excited about flogging that monster chaise that you made the mistake. Oh, could you? Well, we're right back where we began, so... Rodney, what's this sorted today? And why are you looking at me when you said that? You're the inexperienced one. I've run my own business. I take it there's still no saying the missing cash? Nope, and Rodney's on the warpath. Oh, he'll calm down. It's only money. Oh, yeah. Money's threatening to dock from our wages. Well, don't worry, I'm sure it won't come to that. You're totally stupid. You know what he's like, you know what he's capable of. I know what you've told me. I've heard both sides now. Oh, I bet you have. I thought he had more sense. He doesn't care about you. He cares more than you ever did. And about Sarah as well. I don't want him anywhere near Sarah, do you hear me? And what makes you think you've got a choice? She's my baby. And mine. When it suits you. Shut up, you. Do you not see what he's doing? He's using you and Sarah to wind me up. Oh, for God's sake. What is it with you, Robert? Have you not caused enough trouble? What more do you want? It's got to stop. Why? What are you planning on doing? We'll see how long you stick around once I've had a word with Kane. You pig. We're just trying to be honest with you. Then we'll really see if he wants to stick by you, if he really cares. Fine. What? If that's what you feel you've got to do. We'll have to face it sometime. No, I think we should go. You had your chance. 
Now it's my turn. I can't believe you're doing this. What are you going to do, Andy? Smack me around in front of your kid? Keep Debbie here against her will? You're doing your big man out with me. But what about with Kena? We'll do whatever it takes. Come on. French, did you say? Oh, well, I could bit of garlic, John, me. And two of them are women. Oh, no, I'm not interested then. Come on. Edna, you're a Christian. Can you help me out? Oh, my house isn't geared up for continentals. <laughs> then I'm just going to have to make room for them somehow. Edna? Mm -hmm. What about a clean living Englishman? Who? Dr. Forsyth. Oh, that's not fair. You only offered me furnace. I love Dr. Forsyth. Right. She asked me first. It'd be a pleasure. And guess what? It's a two for one. You get Terry and all. Oh, you never mentioned Terry. I love Terry. No, you won't. I shall take them both. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> but don't look so put out, Betty. I'll come and stay with you. I'll see you later. Thank you. Why? What have I done? Oh, you've just brought the average age down in here. I was going to go all day without seeing a decent bloke. Right. Donna! Just the girl I wanted to see. Oh, what are you after? Drinking partner? I was so impressed with how you dragged me under the table at the rugby club. I wondered if you fancied a rematch. I'm free tonight. Good for you. So what do you say? Sounds good. Right. <laughs> Don't you have winning arrangements to make or something? No. I'm well up for it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Max has just invited us out tonight. Actually, he invited you. Oh, right, um... Of course, I meant both of you. How do you fancy a night on the tiles? Um... It's a school night. You know, I'll be fit for nothing the next morning. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, don't worry about it. It's just an idea. Morning. Find my money yet? No, not yet. Still looking. I went through the tape. She might have helped if somebody had changed it. And whose job was that? His. Fantastic. That is fantastic. Well, well, I don't feel so bad about this now. Here. Well, there's any coins in here? That's because I've docked your wages. Maybe it'll teach you some responsibility for the future. What's it's going to teach me is about living in poverty, and I've already done that. I was going to hire a tux for this charity auction lunch. No, don't you have one of your own? I'll oh, just be quiet. What makes you think either of you are going? You're both far too good at giving away money as it is. I knew he'd be upset, but... He'll get over it. He really does care about Sarah. But he never cared about you. Debbie, you didn't believe any of what he said, did you? You know, I'm not lying to you. Yeah, no. I mean, all right, I haven't been a saint, but who has? Certainly not Andy, that's for sure. I just don't know if it's worth all this hassle. We haven't even told my dad yet. We well, may not have to. I think Andy will go through with his little threat. And then what? Look, when I first started spending time with you, I knew I was playing with fire. And I knew what people would think. So when I started to have feelings for you, I decided just not to go there. But I couldn't stay away from you. Or, uh, I think you're worth it all. And I don't blame Andy for wanting to keep her all to himself. I know how he feels. Come on. Let's go. for misery. It's only for the one night. One night with Edna Birch. Words I hoped I'd never have to say. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Paul said she who gets to stop with Betty. It'll be cream buns for you. We'll get Bible studies. Oh, come on, Edna's not that bad. Well, it's too late. I've taken your stuff around now. You know, right? 
We're paying guests. Look, obviously I won't charge you for the night you're staying at Edna's. Oh, thanks. I don't know what you've got to moan about. If you hadn't booked in the extraterrestrials in the first place... Oh, so this is my punishment? Oh, for goodness sake. I mean, how bad can it be? I don't even want to start thinking about that. <laughs> so how's he going with Rodney? Oh, he did it. He actually docked our wages. I feel like a teenager who's had his pocket money stopped. What are you going to do? Starve. Well, hardly. You still live there rent-free. I still have expenses. Oh, Mum, tell Dad to stop being so mean. Well, I suppose... Are you going to stand by and let him call your son a thief? Is that what he called you? No, but he said I was incompetent. It's just as bad. Please. I'll have a word. Beam me up, Scotty. That's Star Trek. Um, what can I get you? A tin opener? What? What would you like to drink to you? Oh, a brandy. A large one, please. I don't mind what he does to me, Dad. It's just always going to work Debbie and Sarah, just to get at me. That's all this is. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What did he actually say? I don't know. Not much. It was Debbie doing most of the talking. Well, so was it her or him that said all this about them being together? Well, her, I think. Although we didn't correct her. It doesn't matter. If it gets between me and Sarah, he's going to be sorry. Well, what then? Another public fight? No, because this time I'll damage him that much that he'll have another chance to play the martyr. But then what? Then I'll go and see Kane. How is that going to help your case with Debbie? Then what do I do? <sighs> Nothing. You wait for me. Oh, nice trip. I don't feel at all well. I'm not surprised. This isn't a DOS house, you know, for old Alkies. This is a respectable establishment. I only had a brandy to settle my stomach. I had the most awful lot flush in the conventional. I think I'm in the change. Um. I'm sure I'll be OK after a little life. I think we'd better get the doctor to have a look at you, oh, eh? I'm sure there's no need. Don't be daft. No point in having a resident quack, is there, if you ain't going to use him? <laughs> oh. oh, come on. Have you done lost your keys or something? Yeah, I'll help you look for me if you want. But I'm quite capable and I don't need an audience, thank you. Oh, damn it! Look, you've got a window open upstairs and I've got a ladder at mine. Oh, why didn't you say that before? Go on, then. Mrs. Birch says, if you break that cup, you'll be replacing it. And she says to remind you that in England, we use saucers. We're not savages. Hey, how come you get biscuits, ginger nuts and all? Huh? Calm down. One of them's for you. Doctor, you're needed. That woman from outer space, she's come over all menopausal. What do you mean, menopausal? I don't blimey know, do I? You're the doctor. Well, come on, shift. I'm coming. Where's he going to in such a rush? Medical emergency. Do you know, he's become very dedicated to the people of this village. I do hope he's appreciated. Oh, he is, believe me. <laughs> I don't believe that one is yours, Terry. <laughs> oh, and to what do I owe this dubious pleasure? I've come here to plead Paul's case and Danny's. It's not on your dock and their wages. <laughs> they were warned. Who do you think you are? A Victorian mill owner. You'll have them sent up the chimneys next. Well, that's one way of getting my 500 back. Anyway, if they didn't spend so much time bickering... Oh, come on. You love them fighting for your attention like a couple of puppies. I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you suddenly rushing to their defence? Well, someone has to. 500 quid's a lot of money if you've got nout. Or can't you remember? I'm teaching them a valuable lesson. 
Yeah, but you're handing down the lessons to the wrong people. I know, here. And when I catch up with a person who did take it, I'll teach them a lesson they'll never forget. Cheers. Oh, sweet. Keeping up appearances even though the church is booked. Just making an effort. But who for? Hoping Max might pop in again. Shut up. Not denying it, then. You had a face like thunder when Marlon said he didn't fancy a night out. No, I didn't. I can read you like a book. Marlon didn't have a clue, of course. Hello! Engagements were made to be broken, darling. And just think of the look on Viv's face if you brought a millionaire's son home. Look, me and Marlon are very happy together. Me and Max are just mates. Just because you can't be friends with a bloke without jumping his bones. Oi! Well, don't judge me by your very low standards. <laughs> Legal little ones, wop your minds with that. Hey, leave all that. What are you doing? I've got all this minute. Well, I'll make you a cuppa. Hmm. I feel rotten now. It's right, County, are you? You're not the first, and you won't be the last. Must be tough on your own. Ah, oh, today was just a one off. Is that because you're missing Scott? No. Managing with that. No, yeah, but there's a difference between managing and being happy, though, isn't there? Don't be nice to me, Danny, because you'll just set me off crying. That's all right, I don't mind. I'm waterproof. <sighs> I need to keep it together for TJ, if nothing else. No, he's fine. No, not. Look, if I stop too long and think about this, then I'll go to pieces. Thank you for worrying, but I just need to keep my head down and get on with it. Yeah, but not on your own. If needs be, then, yeah. What have you got to say for yourself? What about? You and Debbie. Well, she's been letting me spend some time with Sarah. And? And nothing. Oh, I get it. Andy's put two and two together and come up with five, as usual. He thinks I'm at it with Debbie, doesn't he? Aren't you? She's just a kid. It's Andy that likes him young, remember? Yeah, all right. Now, why would I want to lump myself with a teenage mum and a baby? Does that sound like me at all? I don't know. I don't know you anymore. I'm not sure I even want to know what you're capable of. Look, Sarah is the only family I've got left since you disowned me. Well, that's down to you. I wanted to avoid all this. That's why I went up there. I didn't want Andy to see me and Debbie together and get the wrong idea. More lies. I'll think what you want. Well, nothing too serious. Just a combination of heat and excitement. And the brandy won't have helped either. You had me worried there for a minute. <laughs> no need. I prescribe an early night and plenty to drink, and I mean water. Yes, Doctor. You know, you've got the healing touch. <laughs> I feel better already. In fact, I feel like a teenager. <laughs> mm. Well, I don't know where you'll find one at this time of day. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. Now, to bed. Doctor's orders. If you insist. <sighs> and, uh, may I suggest you pick a character that wears something a little less restrictive? Jedi Knight, perhaps? Actually, I've got the gold bikini from Return of the Jedi. Perhaps you'd like to see it. I think you've had enough excitement for one day. Mmm. <laughs> Rest now, you must. Yes, Master Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be less hormonial after the menopause. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got lovely manners. He's very considerate. And he's not at all obsequious as I thought he'd be. I even got out my best china. I realised that it'd be safe in his doctor's hands. It's a GP, not a brain surgeon. Will you be getting your Sunday best out for Steph? Hiding all the sharp implements, more like. Uh, <laughs> no, I shall be treating my guests with the same hospitality that everyone has always come to expect of me. Oh, doorstep sandwiches and stewed tea, then. I will remember that, Edna Birch. The next time you try to palm me off with your past their self by date digestives. 
Listen, I know it's not a night on the tiles, but I'm really looking forward to it. Just being us tonight. Me too. Yeah. Because before you seemed a bit disappointed. Hi! Oh. I thought you were having a big one tonight. Oh, I kind of lost interest after you blew me out. It just wouldn't be the same without you. Or you, of course. Well, it's, you know, it's just not a party without a dingle, is it? Absolutely. <laughs> Some other time, perhaps. Well? He says you've got it all wrong. <laughs> well, what did you expect? When was the last time he told the truth? He made a good point, though. He said he's not the kind of bloke to lumber himself with someone else's kid. Oh, not just someone else's kid, Dad. My kid. Well, if he's such a free agent, then why is he lying around the village? To cause trouble. OK, OK, I know he's lying. To you, to me and, I think, to Debbie. I just wish I could understand why. What's to understand where he's concerned? He's ruined my marriage, my farm, and now he wants my daughter. Why doesn't he just go? Because he can't leave until he's won. When did this get to be about winning? It always has been, Dad, ever since we were kids. This is just the start of it. Well, we can't just sit here and wait for his next move. I'm not gonna. The only thing that wiped that smug smile off his face this morning was when I mentioned Cain. He's scared of him. I don't blame him. He's a flaming psychopath, Andy. That's got to be our last resort. Why? What choice have we got? If you get Kane Dingle onto Robert, you don't know where it'll end. Yeah, but at least it'll end. <laughs>